Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. How I've been saying that all morning, haven't I? This is, there are days where life just gets the better of you and um, your body may be betraying you, your emotions are befuddling you, and uh, you just have to say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. You know what that is? That's a declaration. That is your spirit overcoming your will at that moment. Amen. Because you may not feel like it. How many know sometimes you don't feel like coming to church? Yeah. The best thing you can do is come. Yeah. I don't feel like praying. The best thing you can do is pray. Come on now, you're feeling this. <laughs> the reality is your body's never going to, uh, I guess shouldn't say never, your body's not always going to take you the right way. Amen. But your spirit right. will. Amen. Amen. What did you yeah. say? The spirit is willing, but the flesh, flesh is weak. Flesh is weak. We're going to continue our series on Make Me a Blessing. Last week was wonderful. Uh, you could hear that online. Now we were talking about it takes a uh, audacious faith and obedience. For God to make you a blessing this year. We're focused on making me a blessing. Pastor broke this out on the last Sunday in December. That's online as well. Extremely important for you to hear these messages because they're built on one another. Because really this, this concept of make me a blessing is not a bada boom bada bing thing. It's not an instantaneous just add water and microwave deal. There's a whole lot of stuff, say stuff, that's got to get out of the way. There's some thinking, stinking thinking that's got to get corrected. Some of our habits, some of our ways of life have to be altered and adjusted. Just like when God said to Abram, Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3, get up and get out. You've got to change your location, he says. You've got to change your comfort zone, he says. You gotta get out of what you already know and to move to something that you don't know anything about. I will show you, he says. But other than that, he didn't give them a blueprint. He didn't give them the latitude and longitude. He didn't give them coordinates. He didn't give them a GPS or a map quest. He said, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> and uh, we know that uh, Abraham walked the land, uh, owned a cemetery plot, if you will, and all along, God did show him, but Abraham still lived and loved God anyways, right? You've got to listen to those messages. But before we do that, i got to head of myself. Boudreaux wants to talk to you for a few moments this morning. If you don't know who Boudreaux and Thibodeau are, these are my Cajun friends down there in Louisiana. And they always oftentimes have a little insight to help us understand that we have a problem, right? So here's a good old Boudreaux. He goes to the doctor's office looking extremely miserable. Boudreaux, you don't look good. What's the problem, the doctor asks. Doc, I hurts all over. I'm in a bad shape. I think I'm going to die, Boudreaux replies. Where exactly does it hurt, the doctor asks. Here, Boudreaux says as he touches his stomach with his finger. Oh, that hurt, he cries. And here, Boudreaux says, as he touches his chest with his finger, Ooh, that hurts, he cries. I see, the doctor says, and examines Boudreaux's finger, stomach, and chest, and neck. Hmm, he adds. Doc, I know I'm in bad shape. I know I'm going to die. Tell me, how long do I got? Boudreaux says. Boudreaux, you're a man, uh, you're, for a man your age, you're in pretty good shape. Except, the doctor replies, Said what, Boudreaux? Cuts him off. Except the fact that your finger is broken three places. You're going to live. <laughs> See, the problem is a lot of times you can be hurting and not be aware of where the pain actually is. And I believe many of us, we want God to make us a blessing, but you're hurting and you don't know because you put your finger on it. And that's exactly where you're broke. You try to put your spirit on it, but your spirit may be broke. And God is saying to us, last week we talked about obedience and no one called me up. I didn't get any, any, any bad letters or anything. Nobody was upset with me. But the reality is, in order for God to use you, you have to change. Amen. You have to stop sinning. You have to stop being comfortable in your sinful life. Now, when I say sinful life, that's different than making a mistake. Right. You, know, I, you know, you've got a pastor who confesses his plot. <laughs> plight 
predicament. But the reality is there's a difference between saying no one's perfect, we all got that, and the fact that I embrace my imperfections. That's not biblical. You see, when God shows us something in our life, a, a faulty thinking, a faulty habit, a, a, a situation, He puts His hand on it, not to push us away, but to draw us closer, like He did this morning, right here. He's drawing us close, not to whip us, oh, you stupid, dumb, blah, blah, blah. No, listen, that thing's in the way. Let's deal with that. I want to bring you closer. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's God. Amen. So we're looking at Genesis chapter 2. We're going to look at two things that is in there this morning. And we keep reading it. And as I was putting this on paper, I heard someone say, Come on, Pastor, there's more scriptures in the Bible than Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Yeah, there is. But let's master this first. Genesis chapter 12, I'm sorry, NFV. Verse 1 to 3, it says, The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will. Say, I will. I will. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will. Say, I will. I will. Make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will. Say, I will. I will. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. You. And I love how it continues and says that Abraham moved. <laughs> Abraham got up and did what he was supposed to do. This morning I'm going to look at two uh, things. I'm going to talk about will, and I want to talk about capacity. Will. When God says, I will, what does he mean? When God says something, you know, it, it was a, an old phrase, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Uh, actually, it's sort of incorrect. God said it, and that settles it. Yeah. Whether you believe it or not, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. Pastor can tell us all day long there's power running through those walls. You can say, well, I don't know if there is or not. All right, take a metal object and stick it in there. Let's see if he's rigged. Let's see if he's telling the truth. You see, the reality is God said it. But maybe there's a, there's a problem here. Maybe your finger is broke on that little area there. Because if we don't really understand when God says, I will, it don't really matter whatever else comes out of his mouth. You see, because the scripture says that it is impossible, say impossible, impossible. for God to lie. Well, I didn't ask you to do it, but that's fine. <laughs> it is actually impossible for God to lie. So when God says, I will, and you say, I doubt it, you just said God's a liar. liar. Ooh, that's some bad business right there. You see, when God says, I will, you can, as an old phrase says, take that to the bank. Now, who goes to the bank anymore? We do it all electronic, right? Well, guess what? When God says, I will to Abram, we're going to jump to some New Testament verses. He didn't just say, I will. He done did it. Amen. To excuse my vernacular. Amen. He does what he says he does. Why is that important to you? Trust. <laughs> what is faith? Faith is the ability to say, yes, okay. Even though I don't get it, God. Lord, I believe, but help you my... Some of the most honest prayers in the Bible. Listen, it ain't like you've got to become all T.D. Jakes or Oral Roberts or some of the big guns in prayer and faith and say, okay, until I have their faith, I'll be... No. <coughs> Simply believe Him at His Word now. Amen. Well, why, Pastor? What has He ever done for me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> we ain't got time enough today to tell you what He's done. But if you're not aware of that, the devil's done a good job stopping up your ears and closing your eyes. Amen. And hardening your heart. And you must be coming here for the free bread because there's no other reason why I would see you coming today. <laughs> you see, God says, I will to Abram. And it doesn't show us that Abram is sitting here saying, hmm, should I believe him or shouldn't I? He loves me, he loves me not, he loves me. He doesn't bother. What does it say after verse 3, verse 4? It says, Abraham got a U-Haul truck, had a yard sale, and up and moved. He believed. This year, if you want God to make you a blessing, when God says, I will do something, you need to act. Amen. Amen. Why? Because if he said it, it's going to happen. Amen. We had a closing prayer time some Friday night of our week of fasting and prayer. God put it on my heart that day, do not pray. 
Don't ask for one thing. Instead, I want you to worship me. I want you to focus. We had nine songs on a video that played for us. We had professional bands and singers worth billions of dollars on our screen. I'm telling you, the presence of God was mighty in that room. Amen. And instead of asking God for anything, we declared. We had a, a whiteboard filled with impossibilities. We started on Monday and said, what is your impossibility? The list was so big, it, it could be overwhelming, except we know God. Amen. Yeah. And see, on Friday night, instead of asking for our unsaved loved ones to get saved, instead of asking for impossibilities, someone actually dared on Monday and say, Pastor, as one of our impossibilities, let's dare to believe God to pay off the mortgage in one year. I can see you're excited about that. <laughs> if someone came to you and said, we're going to believe God to pay off your mortgage in one year, would you get excited? Amen. Okay, so pretend I just said that. One year pay off the church's mortgage. Yeah. What's in it for me, Bob? <laughs> you know, it's like... I said, you know what, because as staff, we've already started talking about how can this year we pay it down. But the three of us didn't have faith enough for all of it in one year. We said, let's just do a third. Can you believe that? Impossibility. So instead of praying, we just said, this is the year. We declare this is the year that our unsaved loved ones are going to get saved. Amen. Powerful. I will, God says, I will. He keeps his word. He does not lie. In another scripture, he says, God changes not. You know what that word is? It's a beautiful word. You can't use it too much. I just used it with Pastor yesterday, first time in five years. It's immutable. Use that as a scrabble word. Immutable. That means he changes not. He cannot change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Believe that. Believe that. I will, God says. So I went ahead and did a little research online. And this is what it says. Will. Verb. I didn't want the noun version. I want the verb version. Cause. Choose. Give. Bequeath to another. Some of the, I have to say this slowly, synonyms. Some of the synonyms. Synonyms. <laughs> For will is authorized. Now listen to this. God says, I will authorize your blessing. What is that? Anybody got power to authorize in your job? You know you've got that stamp. <laughs> you know, if you don't stamp it, it don't happen. God says, I'm, I'm going to authorize. Amen. I'm going to command a blessing. Come on. I'm going to decree a blessing. I'm going to, watch this now, this is a scary word, I'm going to demand a blessing. Hallelujah. I'm going to determine, I'm going to direct, I'm going to ordain, I'm going to order, I love this one, I'm going to request a blessing for you. Can you believe that? Yep. And I love this one, I'm going to bring about. Abram, I'm going to make you, I will, I will decree it, I will command it, I will order it, I will direct it. It is in the nature of God to keep his word. So Abraham got up and moved. Now Abraham, we don't know all he, what all the backstory. There's no Paul Harvey, there's no pre, you know, uh, 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 prequel. Of what did Abraham know and how did he know what he knew about God? We don't got that. We just know all of a sudden right here, boom. He's having a conversation with God and God says, this is what I'm going to do. And he knows enough about God to do what? Obey. <laughs> how much more do we know about God and resist? How much more do we know about God and play hide and seek? Well, God, I'm not too sure. That's going to make me uncomfortable. Uh, that's, not, uh, that's not what I'm looking for, God. You see, it's a, it's a powerful thing when you begin to understand what God says is, I will make you a blessing. Now, side note to that. Talk about blessing. On our church Facebook, Glad Times Facebook, there is a video uh, teaching on there, actually three parts. It's by a guy named Luke Giglio. And he does this thing about creation. It's phenomenal. It's powerful. Right? 
But he actually talks about prayer on there. And several of the people in the church have been looking at it and commenting on there. And I actually watched one, uh, part one, on there. And it's encouraging to me because it's how I believe our Monday night prayer meetings are supposed to develop into. We oftentimes come to God in the wrong way. We often pray with the wrong motives. We often come to Him and expect Him to bless our ignorance and our limitedness. <clears throat> our small thinking. And so when I remember years ago in Bible school, Christine and I, we know a, a girl that's Canadian, uh, and she, uh, Andrea, and we go sit down to eat and say, okay, someone pray the blessing. She goes, you're not supposed to bless your food. You're supposed to thank God for your food. But if you bless your food, are you expect it to get up and dance around? And it made me think, so no, I don't need to bless my food. My food is going to bless me. My food is going to fill me. <laughs> so I don't need to bless my food. It's going to be eaten. I need to give God thanks for my food. In fact, if you remember, we talked about communion a couple months back. We started saying in the middle of, or before you go to eat, when you're sitting down, you know what you should do in the, in, in the asking of the, the thanks for your food? Thank God for your salvation. As often as you eat, do this in remembrance of being. Communion, if we just do it once a month, tells us, well, we're only going to remember God's sacrifice once a month. You eat probably three times a day. If you do more, don't tell me. <laughs> Give thanks. Amen. Give thanks to God for provision. Give thanks to God for your salvation. Yes, yeah. But in that video teaching, it's really good. I encourage you to go hear it. Uh, it, it, it pretty much tells you that uh, we're asking God to bless whatever. And why are we? Our prayers are extremely selfish, limited, narrow, and shallow. In fact, are we just simply asking God for permission to do something that we're going to do anyways? Are we simply asking God to put a seal of approval on something that the Word of God has already told you no? Lord, I know I'm not supposed to date an unbeliever, but he's so cute, Lord. He got a job, God. That's him saying something. Lord, I know that she's not saved and she told me if I ever, ever expect her to ever accept Jesus Christ, not to. But Lord, I'm going to secretly believe it for her. And you've got to let me have her. We're asking God for blessing something that he's already said. Don't be legally yoked. Amen. God doesn't go against his word. Oh, he'll let you have it all right. And then later on, you will be like, Lord, why did you ever let this happen? Because you asked him to. You see, we're asking God for permission. We're asking God for a seal of approval. We're oftentimes putting a blessing on the end of our letter of life saying, P.S. God, bless this. Hey, we're packed up. We're getting ready. Lou does this little story. We're going to go to Florida. We ask God to bless our trip to Florida. Well, you know, we should ask for traveling blessings. I love the way Paul asked for traveling blessings. He said, don't pray for me to have traveling blessings. Pray for me that I'll be able to preach the gospel no matter what happens to me. Amen. I'll preach the gospel. That's his traveling blessing. But we want traveling blessings. That means no traffic. It means the car won't break down. The devil won't throw darts at my tires. We are, what are we actually asking God for? And so in this video, he challenges you to say, instead of saying, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, why don't you bless God? Lord, on this vacation, we want to bless you. Amen. Yes. You make that your focus, your priority. It changes the way you see everything. I'm on a cruise blessing God because look at the sunsets. Look at the sunrises. Look at the beautiful water. Look at all that food. <laughs> Amen. Look at the desserts. Jesus. <laughs> Why don't we ask God on these things? Think about it. Lord. Let me bless you in this relationship. If it's an unbiblical, ungodly relationship, you can't That's right. bless God. That's right. Lord, let me bless you in this business deal. It's underhanded, it's backwards, it's illegal. God cannot bless you. You can't bless God. Ooh, Tim, you're getting all kinds of business. I better get in the water. <laughs> Amen. 
what we have to step in. You see, we've got to understand something regarding the blessing of God. This is the powerful thing right here. You see, if we don't understand God's will, I will, God's will for us, we'll miss it all the time. And I've had so many prayers that exhaust me. And come to, oh, Pastor, I don't know God's will for my life. Well, what am I, a Pez dispenser? I'm going to tell you what God's will is for your life. No, I'm telling you, he's already telling you, but it just ain't agreeing with you. He's already telling you. So when I pray for them, oh, you know, pray for me, Pastor, you know, I'm, I'm making some big decision. I said, God's already told you what to do. I'm going to pray for him to give you the courage to do it. Amen. Nah, that's not what they want. <laughs> they want approval. You see, here you got to understand about God's will. If God says I'm going to do it, what does that mean? He's going to do it. And guess what? Through Abram's blessing, he's already done it. Say, already done it. Already done it. You see, he's already done it. Listen to these scriptures. Look them up later. Ephesians 1, 3. Uh, Pastor Rebecca read that for me. I'm only going to read verse 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Say blessed. Blessed. Blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. Say every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. In Christ. Watch this. Now I get to sub this. This Tuesday, I sub right now, and so I'm going to sub in middle school, won't suck it, and I'm going to sub 8th grade English. Now, I sub 6th grade math, and I thank God I was able to do it. I was like, oh man, fractions to decimals. <laughs> All right, honey, okay. I got that. And then when they were like, is this right? I said, I don't know, wait till your teacher comes back. <laughs> but Tuesday, I'm going 8th grade English. Listen, you know I can't speak English. <laughs> I was speaking Spanish the other day in the class, and a Spanish girl says, please don't speak Spanish. I said, why? Because you don't know how. I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, you see, all I know is this. Blessed with an ED says what? It's past tense. That means it's already done. It's already happened. That's important to understand this. He says, I'm going to bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 1:16. From the fullness of His grace, we have received, say received, received. one blessing after another. Amen. That means it keeps coming and coming and coming. You've not acclimated the gift that He's already given you. You've not begun to utilize the blessing He's already given you, and you're asking for more. That's like sitting down at Thanksgiving table, you've got the whole plate full, and you're not even eating yet, you're saying, what else is there? Eat, brother. Put your fork in there. Stuff something in that hole. Eat. <laughs> and then when you're done, if you're still hungry, we'll show you what a more is. <laughs> Second Peter 1, 3 to 4 says, His divine power has given us everything. Say everything. Everything. We need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, He has given us His very great and precious promises so that through them we may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in this world caused by evil desires. You see, God says, I will. That means he's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. God says, I will. It's a done deal. You just need to believe. Amen. You need to accept it. Amen? So watch this. In order for you to be a blessing, God needs you to believe. Right? God needs you to understand. He keeps his word. But what else? God needs to make room in you. God has to increase your capacity. Say capacity. Capacity. You say, why are you making me say all these things? Because I want to keep you awake. God says, I need to increase your capacity. Watch this now. This, this you should look at this for days on end. Watch this. Genesis chapter 2 and 3. God says to him, right? It's a little out of order for me, so I adjusted it for my notes. But God says, I'm going to make your name great. He starts with one man, and he says, I'm going to make your name great. Well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? I'm just one guy, but I'm going to make your name great. And then what does he say? I'm going to make you into a great nation. So he takes me by capacity from being, okay, I've got a great name. Now he's making me a, isn't that bigger than a name? You see, he's going to make me a great nation. And it isn't stop there. Watch the capacity, the fullness of God. This is the very principles of the kingdom of God, is what I'm about to say. It takes him from a name to a nation, and now the world. 
That's it. He says, every people, all peoples of the world are going to be blessed through you. Amen. That's capacity. If Abram didn't move, that would never have happened. He got up and out in obedience and watched. He counted and said, look at the stars, look at the sand. He had two sons. One he almost killed. The other one he almost killed by sending his mother away. It was the, it was the mistake. And yet he says, I'm going to make him a father of a nation, a great nation. And all the peoples of the world will be blessed. We know in Hebrews it says it's attributed to Abram as faith. Because in his mind, somehow, he believed God said, I will. And therefore, he will. Hallelujah. You see, capacity is interesting. I looked that word up. Capacity. The, the, the noun, it's a volume, a limit of volume helped. We talk about capacity of a vessel. You know, you got this tank, it only holds five gallons. How much can you put in a five gallon tank? There you go, you can do sick great man. Right? Capacity is extremely important because when you think about this for a moment, we're all vessels. I worked in an oil field and we had our pipeline and all of our vessels, all the different pieces of equipment attached to this oil and gas pressure coming up out of the ground. It was in the ground at 9,000. We had to get it up and keep it somewhere around 900 because at 1,400, stuff starts to blow up. So capacity was really important for us. We had to make sure we didn't have too much and then we, could, and we had to make sure we didn't have too little because too little created a lot of things to start going wrong. Stuff started breaking. That happens to us. We're vessels. Make me a blessing has nothing to do with trying to just make you something and bigger and more important than everybody else. No, make you a blessing so that you can bless God with whatever He has for you. Whatever you have in your hands. You can bless God. Watch capacity. Scope, size, content, expanse, full, range, reach, and room. So in short, we say, make room for God. Make room for God. You see, we can't say, make me a blessing, and think, nah, he's not really going to do it. You'll get nothing. You'll do nothing. You, your life this year will be no different than last year. Except for maybe you came to church a little more. You see, if you say, make me a blessing, then you begin to understand, okay, he said it, he's going to do it, so therefore he's going to do it. That's done, I'm just going to believe. Now what does it mean? Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me? No, I know it doesn't mean that. He's going to create a capacity to flow through me so I can glorify God with whatever I have, wherever I'm at, with whatever I do. Someone say amen. Amen. You see, really, that's the point of it. That's the point. That's the point of this whole thing. And it happens to be one of our four G's. It's the third G, give. And we always think it's all about money. It has to do with your life. If God has your heart, your know, money is easy. That's it. If God has your heart, your talent belongs to Him. That's if God has your heart, your possessions belong to Him. If God has your heart, then you'll do whatever He says because you love Him. Amen. See, that's the power of this whole deal here. That's why when Pastor suggested this, we, I, I mean, it just, I was like, man. Now, I didn't understand how the imagery would be, you know, all the little cute little things we work with. But I'll tell you, the, the thought was just dynamic. Especially for this church, this time, right now. That's right. That's right. The devil's been assaulting this region for a long time. Before a lot of you probably ever got saved. Back in the 80s, there was a powerful, strong church here. And then the devil done besought that and messed that up. That is now closed today. It's a rundown building. But I have a lot of fond memories there. You see, the reality is if we forget it's about capacity, it's about making room, this building will have a day that you close the doors. God forbid. God forbid is right. You see, it's not because the pastors are going to make this thing happen. God forbid. It's because we're going to make this thing happen. You say, what do you mean I'm going to make it happen? It's God through you, but if you don't make room for Him, it's not going to happen. That's it. That's all it when, I come, when I came here in the summer and I started meeting some of you guys, I just, I, I, I see things way past what, what is exactly right now. 
And I say, my God, what this, my God, this, my Lord, this. And sometimes pastors, you know, he's pulling me back a little bit. That's what a leader's supposed to have, vision. You see, we don't see ourselves that way. That's why we're stuck in a rut. That's why we're stuck in the mud. That's why we're going nowhere. You see, capacity limits what God wants to do through us if we don't allow Him to fill us full, to knock out the things that limit our capacities, unbelief, fear, laziness, sin, selfishness, lack of hunger, spiritual hunger, prayerlessness. We will never be legalistic here, Pastor and I. We will never be. Amen. But can I say this? When we have a week of prayer, it probably is a good idea at least one night, if you're hungry at all for God, Right. To come out and pray. Oh, it doesn't mean you're not praying at home. I'm, I sure hope you are. But the reality is there's a power when we come together. Amen. 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 You see, corporate, that's where God is trying to move us to. So prayerlessness, all the stuff that's already filling our hearts. You see, he wants to increase our capacity. I will make you a blessing. I will pour myself through you and you will glorify me. You will bless me through your life. Watch this, because we don't even think, well, God wants to go here. But in your job. God wants to be glorified in your job. Hallelujah. He wants to be glorified in your trips and your vacations and your little jokes. God wants to be glorified in your meal times. God wants to be glorified through your possessions, through your money, through your time, and through your relationships. And what you need to do <coughs> is simply today, if you can, decide that you can take God at His word. Finish that. Mm. God, you said it. I believe it. So Boom. And then from there, this is where work starts to happen. Then you've got to start taking time in your prayer life. God, what are those things that I've Allow it to grow and block the flow. Amen. You see, in the oil field, they got these pipes, and all this stuff's got to come up. And every now and again, the company I work for, we got called because the flow started getting less. Capacity was decreased. So they called us out there, and we had to shut her down, cap her all off, and then we had to open her up and find out was it paraffin? Wax. Was it calcium? Scales. Was it sand? We had to see what was blocking it up. And then depending on what it was, that was the tool we used to go down there to try to bust a hole in it and break it free and clean it up. So that way the oil company can make all the money that they want to make. I know you don't like them, but <laughs> especially right now when we're filling our tanks and our oil. But that's the same thing in our life. What's the paraffin in your life? What's the calcium scales that are plugging your flow up? What sand, what debris have you allowed to get in there and decrease your capacity for the fullness right. of God? Yeah. Amen. Only you can say it. I'm not going to run around saying you're guilty of this or that and the other. The Holy Spirit's already doing that if you listen to Him. Right. And He's not doing it to say you're a bad person and push you away. He's saying it because He wants to unplug that. Amen. So you can flow. That's it. You can That's flow good. with the fullness of God and let Him make you a blessing wherever it is you are. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. Praise God. I was so looking forward to this message and God started moving during the music. Hallelujah. He did more during that time than anything else in this sermon today. I guarantee you. Die, die, die. Are you willing to let God make you a blessing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. Are you willing to allow Him to do the work in your heart? Yes. yes. And your life. You've got to adjust some things. Correct some thinking. <laughs> But you know what? It's worth it. Because what he has in mind for you is so much better than what you've imagined for yourself. So much better. So much more wonderful. Full of faith. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name. Lord, let us embrace this word. Let us trust you for what you said. And let us realize you've already blessed us with every spiritual blessing. If we would just allow you. Yes. To open the flow again, Lord. Yes. Yes, God. To get stuff out of the way, Lord. Jesus. That you can flow through us and we can begin to realize these blessings you've already given to us through Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name.
All God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Where did the girls go? <laughs>